uh, the two inches in reach, three years age difference between the two. Sharks of 27 needs to make something happen. Take a look at the Florida rules under which they'll be fighting. A 10-point must system in effect. Three knockdown rule. Yes, it is here. No standing eight count. Fighter can't be saved by the bell in any round. Only the ref can stop the fight. And the accidental headbutt rule that will go to the cards if half the fight has been completed. So we are ready for action here in Miami. And for all of the ring action now, let's go up to Thomas Schreiber for the particulars. Thomas, if you will, please. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mikasuki Indian Gaming Arena, America presents and the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, proudly presenting you Fight Time on Fox. Let's get the action started. We have for you, first of all, 12 rounds of boxing in the junior middleweight division, and it is a unification bout for both the IBA Americas and IBA Intercontinental Championships. It is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. President is Cy Young Award winner Dean Chance. Supervisor is Michael Marley. Along with the Florida State Athletic Commission, Chairman is Eric Riley. Vice Chairman is Terry James. Commissioners are Alvin Goodman, <laughs> Dr. Jack Giugino, and Alito Waldman. Executive Director is Mike Shanti. Physicians at ringside are Chief Physician Dr. Alan Fields and Dr. Raymond Garcia Septian. The timekeeper is Carmine Chiricella. The three judges assigned scoring on a 10-point must system are Stu Winston, Rick Bays, and Peter Tremetera. When the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action will be Tommy Kimmins. Introducing to you first, fighting to my left out of the red corner, he's wearing black trunks with white lettering and weighed in at 153 pounds. Hailing from Seattle, Washington, he has a professional record of 18 wins, four losses, one draw, with 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the current IBA Intercontinental Junior Middleweight Champion, Tim Shucks. And his opponent fighting directly across from him out of the blue corner. He's wearing red trunks with white trim and weighed in at 154 pounds. Coming to us from Panama City, Panama, he has a professional record of 27 wins, three losses, with 23 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the current IBA America's Junior Middleweight Champion, Santiago Samaniego. Once again, your referee in charge, Tommy Kimmins, now to give the instructions. Gentlemen, this is the IBA title fight, and you received your instructions in the dressing room. I want to remind you that this audience is here to watch you fight, so keep it clean. Touch him up. All right, Tommy you Kimmins, right the referee, third man in the ring with the instructions to the two fighters. Simone Diego, 25 and 3. Shocks, 18, 4 and 1. Samaniego trying to work himself back into the ratings. He was considered a very bright prospect. He was uh, rated. He got an opportunity to uh, uh, fight Michael Lowy for the WBO Welterweight Championship. He came close. It was a very close fight, but uh, he was not able to take the decision in Germany away from Lowy. So he lost that bout and then suffered a, an almost incomprehensible defeat as he lost to Felix Hernandez, very much a journeyman who was only 9-5-1. Montiego was beaten in that fight, but then he came back with the tape that you saw of his fight with Theo Elmore looked very good. Very important fight for him here tonight. Yeah, and that uh, Elmore fight got him back on the winning track, gave him some confidence. He was able to keep, keep the pressure on and get a knockout late in that fight. That fight went into the seventh round. He is a very fast starter, and he's been in the past. 17 of his KOs in the first three rounds. He keeps the pressure on. He likes to bang the body. He says his style is an aggressive puncher. For Tim Shocks, on with his back to you right there, and Shocks across his belt. He says in the ring, I'm a boxer puncher. My best punch is the left hook. He has uh, been into boxing since he was 20 years old. Today, Tim Shocks is 27. He uh, went to Philadelphia, moved to Philly to run track for Temple, and uh, had torn a muscle in his left leg, and so started working out at Joe Frazier's gym. Right into the heat of it. <laughs> he went 15 and 15, about even as an amateur before turning professional back in 1994. Well, Shocks had an opportunity against the very highly rated Rodney Jones a year ago at the Great Western Forum in Los Angeles, and he came up far short in that fight. 
Jones, one of the, uh, the top contenders in that division right now. So tonight he can answer back, perhaps, and get his thrust himself into the picture with an impressive showing against Simone Diego. Oh, yeah, well, he says, my losses have come when I'm out of shape. That fight with Rodney Jones. He says he only had one week notice because he wasn't in the best of shape. For this fight, he found out last Wednesday. But he says, I was training for another fight, the Bronco McCart fight. He's a, a champion of the world. He says, I've got a surprise for them, for San Diego. And he comes out this first turn down like he has a little bit of a surprise. Tim shocks with his right hand. That's where his power is. And he's utilize, utilizing all 20 feet of this ring. Moving around pretty well and making San Diego reach for him. Yeah, just his fight plan. He said, tonight I'm going to work the jab, and I'm going to use the angles. And what he's saying there is he's going to walk around San Diego. San Diego would love it if Shots would just stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and just trade. Let's see how hard what each of us can hit. San Diego's fairly heavy-handed. You saw it in this fight with Theo Elmore. He likes to wear fighters down if he can and take them out in the later round. I heard Sean mention that he's the first cousin of Roberto Duran, San Diego's mother and Duran's mother are sisters. He admired Duran kind of from a distance, but they weren't and never have been really what you call close. End of round one. Two get a chance to feel each other out. We go back into the corner with Santiago Samaniego. And obviously, San Diego's idol is Roberto Duran. He sparred with Duran back in Panama. Adam T. Stahl after Duran. Across the ring, his opponent, Tim Shocks. Tim Shocks likes it when opponents advance. You get that all night from San Diego. Might you see referred to there that eight round draw against Greg Johnson. Not a good showing for Sox. Johnson is only eight and five, and an eight round, he should be able to beat a guy like that. Yeah, but he said he kept changing the weight. He said it was 160, then 158, then 154. And he lost too much weight overnight. There so always seems to be an explanation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, and this is this is unlike football, baseball, basketball. It's, it's you that gets beat. It's Tim shots. There's got to be some reason. It's Sean O'Grady. There's got to be some reason. It couldn't be me. I, I didn't get, you can't, nobody can beat me. There has to be some reason behind that. Well, the fighters always coming up with uh, some reasoning on their losses. Not excuses, just no, no, a no, logical not, explanation. Not excuses. I've never, I've never talked to a fighter who's been beaten. <laughs> Well, they, they come out here in round number two with uh, Simone Diego in the red trunk, shocks in the black, and look as though they want to pick the pace up a little more and start getting into it. They both uh, picked up a good sweat in that first round. Coming into this ring tonight, both bone dry, uh, which is significant of fighters who are prepared for a long fight. This fight scheduled for 12 rounds. Simone Diego asking shocks if he wants to fight. Well, basically just held his hands out his side. Basically said, how about standing still? Which means, I guess, that he's being bothered by the movement of Tim Shaw. Oh, but movement will bother any fighter who is a hard puncher like San Diego. 21 KOs of his 25 wins. He wants Shaw to stand still. <laughs> you know, one of the things, one of the, the benefits of fighting on television is you get the heat from the lamps, the television lamps, that uh, kind of rain down on you. It is a little bit chilly in this in this arena here. Uh, and when the two fighters came in the ring, it may have been a little bit cold. But neither fighter knew about his opponent, so you, they used that first round as kind of a feed them out round. That was study hall in round one. They're getting through it a little bit better here in the second round. Samaniano is finding his shots and then the one recipient of his punches, but now finally oh. Samaniago manages to pin him just momentarily up against the ropes, but a nice job by Shots to at least slide off those ropes and yeah. get away. Once your back hits those ropes, you're taught to slide down them. Don't try to come right straight off the ropes. Good work from Tim Shocks. Tim Shocks has a lot of good skills. He's a very skillful young fighter. Well, he needs to move, and he needs to be good defensively, Sean, because he doesn't carry a big punch. 
And you know, if you know your limitations as a fighter, that's going to help you out. Yeah, but a major problem for him all night is going to be moving around to his right. He runs into the left hook of San Diego. San Diego's power is in that gancho, the left hook. Right there. See, that's what San Diego likes. Good right hand from San Diego, too. Strong right hand that knocked shots back into the ropes. And he's a little rocky right now. And San Diego senses the predicament of shots here and is going after him. And he really shocked him in that second round. Shots is hurt. And there's a the bell running a red hot second round. That last minute, San Diego finally found the target. Very important at the end of the round to really come on strong like that. You see, you're. Right, corner, back to his corner, worrying about his eye or worrying about that barrage of punches. Here is what happened. Back in that second round, San Diego kind of flooded through the first two and a half minutes. For the final part of the round, he started pouring on, talking shots like that about 30 seconds to go. On comes San Diego, and then he kept that assault up as he kept the pressure on. And look at these left hooks. San Diego loves throwing that left hook. Most of his power is in that left hand. He is naturally right-handed, but he favors the left. AKA Roberto Duran. Duran. Andrew Steele has a wonderful left hook. Let's go. Good second round for Santiago San Diego. And he's nodding his head yes to the fans as he gets ready for round two. He feels something. Well, Tim has to get on his shock absorbers this round. Start moving. He's at agility that he has. Oh, good combination. Yeah, nice left hook by Shots. He used to prize some on the end. He may have been a little too relaxed but, and overconfident coming after the start of the second round. Well, that was complacent. And he had a nice little left hand pivot. This is where he's done oh. the best work, Sean, getting Shots up against the rope. Yeah, you gotta get off those ropes or tie up and allow the referee to break you. And Shots having trouble doing either right now. San Diego would like to see the fight just stay right in this, this structure with him uh, hitting shots up against the rope. Yeah. Shots not sliding the way he did in yeah. that previous round. In the last round, when he back hit the ropes, he slid down the ropes. Not doing that here. Just standing toe to toe trying to dodge these punches. A uh, horrible impression on the judges, too. At the first of the round, your back is against the rope, and you're trading with somebody like San Diego. San Diego getting leverage now into his punches. He's really sitting down when he's got shots up against the ropes. And he's going to get some better power into his shots, not having to chase them out around the run and reach for him. Yeah, and Tim Shots punches going backwards. His standing straight up, leaning against those ropes. No power in his shots. Uh, I'll try to say that. Yeah, like that. That was a good right hand. Again, got Samaniego. But Samaniego here, Sean, is throwing a lot of punches, so I guess he's going to be open for some in return. Well, uh, anytime you throw a punch, he reach to throw it. Each hand's going to be vulnerable, like a shot like that. But uh, he doesn't care. Samuel has a good set of whiskers. He just wants to land his own bomb. He'll take a couple to get inside. Yeah, that's it. And the cousin of Roberto Duran trying to prove that he's got hands of stone himself. See that power? He leans over to the left side, San Diego does, to throw that left hook. That's why he has so much power in that left. Gets all his weight right into it. Good leverage on the punch. Oh, there's a good right hand. Some shots. Now, if you're shots, you start moving around to your left. That's away. It's certainly away from the power punch. Of San Diego. Both of their punches. That corner might be a bad spot for shots to be in. Tim has seized his movement. And that is where it is. One of his best skills is his leg movement. And he's trying to punch with a puncher. Yeah, this fight's not going the distance. And that's a mistake. And now Samaniago looks as though he's setting his man up. Santiago Samaniego grew up on the mean streets in Panama City. Was a street kid himself involved in street fights. That's where he learned to fight. He doesn't need to turn this one into a street fight, but he loves a slugfest, and he's got one right here. As we come to the end of round three, and Santiago Samaniego going to work. Okay. 
I don't know. He's well, uh, probably not much more than yeah, that. If you get that, he's ready to go. Second go. Let's go, second. Let's go, second. Let's go. And we begin round four here at the Boxing Center at the Mikasuki Indian Gaming Center in Miami, Florida. Rich Mulata along with uh, Sean O'Grady ringside. We're watching a junior middleweight battle between Santiago, Samaniego, and Red Trunks. And uh, Tim Shots in the black. And Sean seems as though Samaniego, his advantage each round has grown bigger. Yeah, well, he is a fighter who gets in tremendous shape and puts the pressure on trying to wear down his opponent. And he's doing just that. Tim Shots, Shots going backwards, holding the power that he would have if he was able to use his legs like he wants to. Trying to see any similarities between Santiago's style and all with Roberto Duran? Tremendous similarities, yes. Uh, pressure fighter, tough, good shape, good hooks. Uh, Duran was good with both his left hook and his right cross. Santiago is good with his left hook. <laughs> got, a, got a respectable right cross. He's worked harder on that. The, the problem is all his weights on the left, hook, left two foot to increase the power of his left hook. He does a nice job of building a crescendo. He, he starts off the round kind of, a, kind of a slow pace, and then he builds as the round continues. Now, most of the fighters that he faces all come out strong at the first part of the round. And then they fade as the round goes on. A good right hand from Shots. Yeah, and Shots has been able to land that right on, a, on occasion. Do you, do you see Samani Agos being a sucker for the right hand? He's been hit about four or five times. Yeah, yeah look where he carries his left hand. See it down by his right. Don't work out of it. Work out of it. Your chin there. But he's hitting the body. <laughs> you protect your body, not realizing your head is vulnerable. Can bring that right hand, Samuel keeps that right hand right from the chin. He tries to ward off some of those right hands with his own right, like that right there. But they uh, did some work over the left eye of Samuel between rounds. There's, there's a little bit of an abrasion up there, and I think we both know why. He's been eating those right hands from shots. Now Samuel trying to get his jab to work to some effect. Shots trying to get himself back into the fight, and at least so far here in round four, doing a better job. What's the best way for him to fight, do you think, uh, Samaniego? Oh, he's got a circle, Samaniego. He cannot stand in front of him like he's doing there. There's what he has to do. Walk around and turn him. You got to walk. Samaniego is too good as a vertical fighter. If you move on him laterally, he can't. Great! No question. He can have a difficult time dealing with it. you got to put the angles on him. Seconds now of round number four, probably the closest round of the bout. Yeah, a good round for Tim Shocks, and he needed that. His confidence blown in that third round. Ah! Remember, this is a 12-round bout with two or four. They're uh, uniting the IBA America's title. Yeah, the IBA the so the man man the the okay. They would both like to it to be. Well, Tony Angle is he's, he has an opponent who stands in front of him, who's usually pretty good. Watch him, watch him wipe away these punches from Tim Shock. Shock's trying to walk around, did a fine job that round of walking around Samuel. Later in the round, the two trying to bang a couple of right hands from Shock. Samuel with his left. One thing I don't like is when he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Looks at them, nods his head, then looks at the other side of the ring, sees somebody over there. I think he was also looking over to you for some advice here. He seems to be. He took the wrong guy. He was paying attention to many different things and not really paying attention. Then he seems completely focused mentally on business at hand. Business at hand. Tim Scott. Now, he did take a breather, finally, as he did back in that fourth round. He kind of took back a little bit. Shot's biggest win in his career was a 12-round uh, stoppage of former contender Terrence Ali, but it must be said that Ali was well past his prime when, uh, when they met a couple of years.
years ago, but still he managed to get that victory. What experience he picked up in that match. 52, 13 and two from Terrence Ali. World contender. I'll fight with Ali back in February of 1997. Tommy just kind of flicking that jab out now. It's almost a, a range finder for his uh, big artillery. But not when he throws that jab out, it's not really a chance to do damage. Kind of pause with it and hopes to open up with his hooks and right crosses. Got a look back in the third round, like Tom Yeager was on his way to scoring his second knockout. And the shots got some confidence in the fifth round. Shots now saying, you know, I'm going to look in. Shots with you, He's got to get the angle. He's got to remain focused. Continue to turn Tom Yeager. Like that. Move on the side. And then use the jab. And then how do you get some offense going off of all that uh, movement yeah. and turning your opponent? He's been real effective with his right hand. You move over to the side and crack the right hand. Let it go right there. Don't run into the kind of angle. See how Tim Cox also keeps that left hand kind of low. Yeah, good right hand. And Cox, Cox not known as a power hitter. Only 13 KOs in his 18 wins. Yeah, well, at least he's doing one thing in this round in the last couple of rounds. And some on the ego hits him, at least he's hitting him back. First three rounds, he wasn't bothering the bull down. Yeah, I think that's the first rule of boxing <laughs> if he hits you, hit him back. Someone will really keep your trunks off the floor. This little work inside by his shots and getting away from some on the ego. And he's right there, Sean. Some on the ego looks like he's going to be losing him early in this fight. And and suddenly he's turned an easy fight into a much harder fight. There's an odd shot to get back into it. Both physically and mentally. I think mentally more important than physically. But he continued that sound like he was doing in the third round. Oh, a good right hand from San Diego. And inside the ice is hard. Punch. Clutch knees buckle. And he sagged back into the work that time. And he does again. Now when you get hit and get knocked out on your feet, you don't go down. But it just drains the energy out of you. That's what happened to Tim Scott. End of round five, and after two and a half good minutes in round five, suddenly it all came apart again in the final 30 seconds for Tim Scott, and he looks like a very weary battler as he sits down. You got to reach way down, baby. Listen very to me. Very weary because he got hurt. Because you, your eyelids also get extremely heavy when you get hurt in a, in a fight. These combinations from Dominic Ego landing there right on the point of his chin, and Tim Scott is hurt. Here's another look at it. Another angle. Keeping the pressure on is San Diego, a wearing down type of fighter, building to the end of the round. And he poured it on at the end. You want to send your opponent you back to his corner, thinking about what he has just tasted. You've got to have positive thinking now. He sure doesn't hey, like the body down. language of Tim Scott and the way he looks over in that corner. He looks like he lost all that confidence and enthusiasm right in that last 30 seconds. There's Samaniego, who obviously has to be encouraged by what happened in that final half minute. He was bounding off the stool, ready to go. Oh, difference in the body language of those kids that came out for the round. And this is where Santiago has to pick it up. He has to keep the pressure on right now. You know what may happen here is Tim Scott's may still be reeling shots from that barrage at the end of the last round. Samaniego in the red, and Scott's in the black at the Mikasuki Indian Gaming Center. Miami, Florida, Rich Morata along with Sean O'Grady as Barry Tompkins not with us here this evening. And Samaniego back to work here once again at the start of the round. Another hat. Tim, Tim, Tom Timmons. Oh. Oh, he's just walking right through yeah. shots now. Yeah. No, no punches and shots at all. Shots has to punch back to tie up. And yeah. he's just getting battered now up against the ropes. And the crowd here beginning to sense that something's about to happen. And Samaniago, I think, has that same sense. He's looking now, I think, for a finisher. Well, it's a matter of time, yeah. Good right hand by Samaniago. And another one. And he opens up and shots in real trouble here up against the rope. And looking for an out, but he can't find one. Oh, beautiful right up a cut by Samaniago. Same shots down. It seemed only a matter of time. Oh. Ah. Good point from the nose. The count is... 
stopped at six. Well, he sends the money to a neutral seven, corner. Now it's seven, eight, eight. shots. Right. Able to get a couple of extra seconds. Tough kid to get up. Go. He is taking a shellacking this round. Samaniego all over him like a cheap suit. Again, here he comes again. Samaniego chasing shots around the ring. Shots waving him in. Just hoping that Samaniego might miss him with a punch so he could counter, but Samaniego is all over him. Good left hook by Shots. And a right hand by Shots. Yeah, Shots has Samaniego coming after him for the kill, but Shots has to wind up and let something fly. He's got to beat Samaniego off of him. Two big punches by Shots after being knocked down, but now Samaniego back to work once again. Shots trying to fight back, showing hard. He caught his arm in the ropes. Well caught on the ropes. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Oh, good right hand. That's all. Down goes Shots. And I don't think he'll be getting up this time. Oh. He's dazed in the corner. They can't reach five, but Samani Ego can't stay. stay in a neutral corner. That's going to give Shots a time. chance to get up. He would have never Seven. risen and beaten the count. Hey. Okay? And now he takes a mandatory eight count. That saves him just momentarily. Referee Tommy Kimmon stops the fight. Good stoppage there. Yeah. And Shots was totally beaten. Shots did not answer the question that Kimmon's asking. Are you okay? You want to continue? Tommy Angle all over Tim Shots. He has a great explosiveness about him. Tim Shots with a... Terrible feeling Josh came into this fight. He said I'm in shape. Uh, is that a surprise for them? Bringing the Bronco in the park. Uh, Ron Diago, Tom Diego gets a win and a victory and uh, turns the pressure up immediately. Very impressive work by Simone Diego. That right uppercut, really the clincher for him. Another KO victory. What, what, what hearing now, Rick? Yeah. Okay. Right away to tribal, right? And we welcome you back to Miami's Miccosukee Indian Gaming Center where we've just watched very impressive performance by Santiago Samaniego. There you see him. He now owns both of those IBA belts, the Continental title and the America's uh, title. Very impressive win for Samaniego in much the same fashion that he took care of Theo Elmore in for just wearing down his opponent. There you see the battered Tim Schatz who got a little bit more in trouble with each succeeding round, it seemed, and he could no longer stand up, and that was all she wrote. Let's go up now to Thomas Schreiber and make it official. Thomas? Ladies and gentlemen, we have the official time, two minutes, 48 seconds of the sixth round. Referee in charge, Tommy Kimmins, calls a halt to the bout with your winner by technical knockout, and now both IBA Americas and IBA Intercontinental Junior Middleweight Champion, Santiago Samaniego. Well, the 24-year-old from the streets of Panama, Panama City, with an impressive performance, even Tim Schatz would have to admit that, and with some grudging respect, I'm sure, for his opponent here this evening, Santiago Samaniego, who is with Sean O'Grady right now, Sean. Thanks, Rich. Louis de Cubis is going to help me in Turbot for uh, Santiago. You know, it looked as though in the third and fourth round, you, you kind of stepped back a little bit. Did you need the work tonight? Dice que con el tercero y cuarto lo tuviste mal algunas veces y después echaste para atrás. Necesitabas el trabajo porque echaste para atrás cuando lo pusiste mal. Eh, porque el trabajo de nosotros era los primeros rounds y suave, con calma, y se para pa, pa tener más distancia. Uh, the, the game plan was the first four or five rounds to be cautious and then take it, take it over. We're in tremendous shape. 
and we're just going to take over after the fifth round. You have a little bit of a, an abrasion over here on your on your left eye. Did he ever hurt you at any time? ¿Alguna vez te puso mal en la pelea? Bueno, no, solamente pe pegaba duro. Pero como ustedes saben, yo soy yo aguanto golpes y yo voy para adelante siempre. He says he's got good, he's a good puncher, but he's got a good chin, you know. He, so he, he took his punches, but he does punch real well. Yeah, yeah it was a good punch. And you know what? You turn it all, also turn it up in the sixth round. We're going to take a look at it. And I want I want you to tell me what you were thinking about here. Why did you turn it up? ¿Por qué empezaste a trabajarlo bien y castigarlo así de esa forma? Porque sabía que estaba dañado. Ya sabía que estaba dañado. Los primeros rounds no me podía confiar, pero ahora cuando vi que ya lo tumbé y lo puse mal ya, oh, bueno, con confianza. He says he knew he was hurt, and that's the reason he turned it on. He just wanted to get this thing over with. Oh, good. Well, you got it over with 26 and 3 with 23 KOs. Let's go back down to Rich Murata. You got a kid here who's on his way. Good champion. Thank you very much. Thank well, Shana looks here right. He's right back in the picture and probably headed right back into the top 10 rankings in the junior middleweight division once again. A KO and 6 for Santiago Samaniego.